Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to Summer of Sport. This is an inaugural BookTube event created by Mark at Booktime with Elvis. We've got a whole uh, home team of co-hosts in which we're reading sports-related literature throughout the whole summer. So this is one of those relaxed BookTube events where you don't have to be jumping on it right away because you've got the whole summer to read either fiction that is about sport or centers around sport or where sport plays a key role, uh, or nonfiction that's about the subject. It's a wonderful idea. I think Mark's underlying implication that this is a type of writing that is underserved on BookTube is correct. Uh, and I have decided to treat this BookTube event the way I treat so many BookTube events, which is just to let it go. Just let it take the shape that it will and add whatever book I'm going to add to my night's reading. I, I, those of you who are new to my channel, I, I do a lot, most of my reading at night. I read all day long, but I do most of my, uh, my uninterrupted, concentrated reading at night. And I'm slowly building that pile all during the day. And BookTube events are a favorite way of mine to do that, because I just chuck something from that event onto the pile. Uh, and that happened last night. <laughs> uh, the night before last, I read a hockey romance. Because the night before that, I had read a hockey romance. Randomly. I read it. Mr. Hockey, random, where a, a bookwormish librarian who's also moltenly hot uh, eventually ends up getting her puck in the net of her favorite super sexy hockey star. And that, I guess, triggered the Amazon algorithm because I then got served up another hockey romance. Only there were no sultry young women involved. There was two young men. And it was pretty serious. It was pretty serious stuff. It had uh, Blades of Desire was the name of it, and it had had hot and heavy moments, but also uh, there was some serious personal matter involved there. Trauma and grief and unresolved anger and anger taking itself out on each other as love. I wished that that book had been better written because it deserved it. Uh, and I guess I am now permanently on the landscape of the Amazon algorithm <laughs> because I got recommended another uh, boy on boy hockey romance still counts as summer of sport it's all about hockey it's it was unavoidable but this is a rules of the game story I think this is well into the series the whole series I think revolves around a hockey team called the Evanston Otters uh, but I don't think I've read any of the others I think this is my first one it's by Brigham Vaughn, and it's called Breaking the Rules. Now, Breaking the Rules should not be the title of a book. Any more than The Reckoning should, or Dark Tide, or uh, whatever. If, the, if the, your title is a staggering cliche, then it shouldn't be the title of your book. It's a very, very boring title. Uh, you might as well call it Hockey Romance. It's a very boring title. I'd be willing to bet that this thing would be hard to find on Amazon or Goodreads, because the title is so common. But nevertheless, <laughs> nevertheless, uh, I might not have, ex I might have gone looking, I might have gone looking outside of the Amazon algorithm, except that this has Eric on the cover, and it is rare when a romance, when a romance novel's himbo cover model is not just acting. Now, Eric is a pretty good actor, and uh, you mark my words. <laughs> not you know who he is, but you mark my words. He's a pretty good actor now, and he's a conscientious worker. He's not the type of egomaniac that's going to say, I'm a pretty good actor now, and that means I'm the best actor who's ever lived. I'd be willing to bet that in five years, he'll be a great actor. He's pretty good now, but it is a thing you learn. It's a craft you learn. You have to learn to stop acting, and he hasn't quite learned how to do that yet. Uh, but in addition to that, I mean, any cover model is, believe it or not, cover models are doing a bit of acting. It's, it don't, don't sell it short as a thing to do. Granted, you have to look good. <laughs> but it's also, you have to be in character for the synopsis that you're given. Uh, and that is more genuine here than it usually is with cover models, because this particular cover model knows his way around a New England ice skating rink. He knows his way around hockey. He's not being asked to play <laughs> here on this cover, but still... I've also made it a kind of uh, informal quest of mine to read every book where he's on the cover, but Eric is well on his way to surpassing Fabio as the subject of the most romance covers. The, surpassing Fabio, surpassing even Paul Marin. He's in demand as a cover model. <laughs> do, you, do you wonder why? <laughs> but, uh, 
in in this novel, he plays a character named Trevor, who is part of the Evanston Otters. I gather from hints in the book that that uh, he has been a recurring character in the other books in this series. I haven't checked them out, so so I don't know. But in Brigham Vaughn's favor, I never felt like I was late to the party. I never felt like I was missing anything at all. The perfect way to do that, if you're doing books and series like that, the perfect way to do it is to bury, to layer under your Easter egg so thoroughly that longtime readers of the series will notice and love it, but that it will not snag the reading of a first-time reader of the series. And Brigham, Brigham Vaughn does that perfectly. I never felt like I was, oh, what's that? Oh, I don't get the reference. Never. But Trevor is kind of, uh, he's the all-purpose mutt of the team. He's the muscle. He's the playmaker. He's the, the guy that is right there in the thick of things. He's not the star. He's never, almost never the one who actually set, who actually makes the goal. But you couldn't do it without him. He's the glue that holds the other players together. The, the mutt, the, the junkyard dog who gets it all done and flies below the radar. And that's fine by him. In this book, that's fine by him. He just wants to live life day by day. <laughs> no strings attached at all. Um, and he has a manager. His manager is named Aaron. His agent is named Aaron. Aaron is slightly older. And he is not footloose and fancy free for a very particular reason. I don't think he ever was. I don't get the impression that he ever was. But maybe he was more so. But he had his heart broken really bad. We're not talking about a boyfriend who leaves his underwear behind. We're talking about someone that Aaron was 100% sure he would spend his life with. And it ends horribly. And it wounds him. A big open scar. And naturally, if you're familiar with romance novels, they don't have to be straight. They can be gay. Uh... Those two characters are going to come together. They're going to meet. And they're going to... Well, <laughs> that, that too. But they're also going to start to answer needs in each other. Uh, and it, I love how Brigham Vaughn does it. Because it strikes Aaron completely out of the blue. Actually, I think it probably strikes both of them completely out of the blue. Not only that this could work, but that that is even possible. I loved that element of this book. Again, much like with Blades of Desire, there is some heavy stuff in here. That stuff that happened to that happened to Aaron, that, that uh, or not Aaron, Wade is his name. Uh, did I say Wade or did I say Aaron? I've got all these, these ridiculous, they can't ever have Irish names. Uh, Wade is his agent. And the stuff that happened to Wade uh, is pretty serious. It has long-term scars on, on him mentally. Uh, and that is not, there are no uh, feel-good summer reading kid gloves around that. that is, it is, this book is every bit as frank and brutal on some of those emotional subjects as Blades of Desire was. So, I don't know, is this common in hockey romance? I have to think not. <laughs> Considering some of the, the bad pun titles I've had always on the word puck, I have to think they usually aren't pinnacles of subtlety. This one wasn't a pinnacle of subtlety. It gets the job done. It's better written than Blades of Desire, but it's still formulaic. It's still kneeling to formula in a way that I don't think it needs to. I mean, if this isn't the first book in the series, I don't know how many books this is, but if this is like the third or fourth book in the series, well, then you've got your audience already. You don't need to hook them anymore. So surely you can drop some of the narrative razzmatazz that isn't real. It isn't realistic. However you want to do it, I, I, this pleased me a lot. Actually, Blades of Desire last time pleased me a lot as well. I was just, I was so frustrated by how lazily written it is that I, it's companionable. You won't stop reading it, but I, this is not that bad, but I, no, this is not that bad. I, I, I enjoyed this very much. I it got the impression, I, again, I have not done the research here because this is just an off the cuff summer of sport reaction video. I don't know, but I got the feeling this is the last book in the series. It, it felt a lot like a lo the big crowd series uh, scenes at the end felt like we were capstoning a lot of plot lines from earlier books that I don't know anything about. I get the impression that almost everybody on the Eviston Otters <laughs> had their day in the sun, except poor Trevor. Now he has his day in the sun. Uh, so I enjoyed this. Uh, I didn't leave any sign that I enjoyed it. No social media footprint of any kind that I enjoyed it. I'm telling you, I guess 
a YouTube video to 10,000 people is probably a social media footprint. But I didn't, like, leave stars on this or rate it or review it or talk about it in any way. So I'm wondering if the Amazon algorithm is still going to serve me up another hockey romance. I don't want to spend the whole summer of sport reading hockey romances. Or do I? I don't know. I had all sorts of plans, all sorts of grandiose plans for the summer of sport, but these last three hockey romances that I've read have not been all that bad at all. They've been perfectly pleasant as an hour to read. Uh, in fact, the last two, Mr. Hockey maybe not so much, but Mr. Hockey is pure fantasy. The last two had some serious stuff in them, some stuff that actually got me invested as a reader. So, I don't know, maybe... I, we have all summer long, right? We have all summer long. I will surely get around to baseball sooner or later. I don't know. I, if the Amazon algorithm serves me up something utterly unbearable, then I won't, I won't do it. But uh, we will see. I'm willing to go with the flow for now for summer sport. <laughs> this I can recommend. And not just because of Eric's cute little puss on the cover. Uh, I can recommend it in reality. Uh, so, so I'm going to wrap this up. That is my latest report. My scouting report for Summer of Sport. I'll be back next time. <laughs> Thank you, Book Two.